That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Lair, the seventh film directed by Neil Marshall, which RLJE Films is releasing October 28th, 2022, just in time for Halloween. Neil Marshall has done a film you really like. I think a lot of people really, truly love Neil Marshall's 2005 horror classic, The Descent. Uh, and I, I think there, there's also a cult following for his debut film, Dog Soldiers. Um, so it's surprising to see um, the quality of this very derivative film, which is the second of so far three films that he's made with Charlotte Kirk. Uh, who co-wrote this film, the the lead star. But Oh, the lead also wrote the film? Yeah. Oh. Uh, and we also recommend the last film they did together, The Reckoning. Uh, but... We liked The Reckoning? Yeah, it was okay. Oh. Uh, but notably, he uh, directed a film that's kind of a Mad Max ripoff, but a lot of fun from 2008 called Doomsday, starring Rona Mitra. Uh, he also did a film in 2010 called Centurion with Michael Fassbender and Imogene Poots. Uh, he did, uh, you know, I think what really, I think there were a lot of projects that fell apart in the ensuing decade, and he did the reboot of Hellboy in 2019, which, you know, I think out of his control, it's just not a very good film. Uh, so here, here's where we are. Uh, with Mr. Marshall. And uh, Charlotte Kirk has a very interesting backstory for anybody that's familiar with her. And I don't know, probably the, the less said the better about the significant drama uh, and scandal that Oh, she... that lady is the lead in this movie? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so stupid. Okay. No, you're not. But Because uh, I read about her. Yes. But I didn't recognize her. Yeah, that's her. But she... I also didn't bother to think of what she looked like. But. She is starring as Lieutenant Kate Sinclair in this film, uh, but all of the, you know, there are accusations back and forth. She's involved in some pretty high-profile scandals involving some powerful men. Uh, well, I mean, that has nothing to do with this movie, I guess, to be fair, but uh, let's just say the story. 2017, members of the British Royal, Royal Army? Air Force. Air Force. So fighter pilots. She's a pilot. She's yeah. one of them. They're flying in Afghanistan and they're being attacked. And one of the planes goes down. It's hers. And she lands in this region in Afghanistan where there's like a bunker. She goes inside because these Afghani insurgents, someone, they're chasing her. And she gets inside and we realize that that bunker is this abandoned space where alien human hybrids are being made. So the backstory is in 1979... A spaceship crash landed in Afghanistan, but it flew over Siberia, so the Russians were aware of it. So the Russians sent some people over to check it out, confirmed that it's a spaceship, and this movie is saying that the Russians invaded Afghanistan to take control of this alien spaceship. Which they really did, but that what history uh, says is a smokescreen for this alien spaceship. Right. Okay. So, of course, the aliens are defeated... And the main character gets out safe at the end. Yeah, basically. The film does open with a blurb saying in April of 2017, this large uh, bomb was dropped by the military at the, in a certain point in Afghanistan. And this is the real story about what was going on behind that. And the bomb that was dropped is on the region where the aliens yeah, were yeah. to destroy them by the U.S. military. Yes, yes. Okay, my first note is I thought we were doing all right. The opening scene is like flying these fighter jets, which looked a little crunchy, but not as bad as that movie um, we watched with the two gay guys in Russia. Firebird. Firebird. Yeah. It's not that bad. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I'm with it. And then there's a lot of tension um, when that lady is first being chased into this thing and then we see the creatures but because they're shooting the container so they're falling out yeah, of this fluid. There's a gunfight. It, 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 all of that looks pretty weird and good. But my first note is this movie was better when no one was talking. Oh yeah, as soon as people start oh. talking it's it it's to use a phrase that you like it's it's crunchy for sure whoa uh, like the acting the accent work because we have u.s military who intercept well she gets out so uh, lieutenant kate sinclair uh, is able to get away from the monster that has been unleashed in this bunker and then she's running around in the desert and then she gets picked up she gets intercepted by the u.s military along with this afghani gentleman yes mm -hmm. who i thought was probably the best actor uh hadi Kanjanpur. Yeah, he was the only one who wasn't laughable. His name was Kabir. So, yeah, once the 
American soldiers pick her up and they all start talking. It's like, whoa, no one on this production has ever watched like an American movie. Because, I mean, instantly it's like these accents are out of control. To be fair, Neil Marshall is from the UK, <laughs> as is Charlotte Kirk. But uh, yeah, the, these Southern fried accents are real bad. Uh, the most egregious of which is the Major, Major Finch, played by uh, Jamie Bamber of Battlestar Galactica fame, as this. One-eyed, uh... I wrote down a bunch of lines, like, but, so, the, like, in the beginning, as everyone's trying to figure out what's happening, the number of times the main lady says, like, if you saw what I saw, and it's like, well, why don't you say what you saw? Like, <laughs> you keep telling these people nothing. You're just like, there's something really bad over there. Then, as she's being kind of, she's not really being held captive because she's British and these are Americans, so we're friendly, but they're a little apprehensive. And then they're on high alert because they have this Afghani man there who they're just automatically assuming is like a bad guy. But she's trying to explain something like what she saw uh, on the door to enter the bunker. He was part of the posse of the men that were firing at her. Right. Which there's an explanation for that. It's that right. like he, he's forced to, he's a local that's forced to tend to them, but yeah. So they're like, well, how do we find this place? Because it's not on a map. And she's like, well, the only thing I know is there was write, writing on the door. Mm -hmm. The writing is in Russian. Mm -hmm. So this lady was under siege, mm -hmm. ran up to a door, saw a statement in Russian. She doesn't speak Russian, can't read Russian. This lady grabs a sheet of paper and writes down this phrase in Russian. <clears throat> like, I mean, that's ridiculous. Yes, but because of that information, and she also has a microfilm camera that has documented. And that camera is what causes the U.S. military to get involved in the end because they want that proof. But uh, getting back to the Russian, the Afghani man speaks English. Very good English. And Russian. Mm -hmm. So he explains, she wrote this phrase down so well that he could read it and mm -hmm. tell everyone what it meant. Mm -hmm. That took me all the and way And then up. he has a backstory that's i guess important to what's going on in the finale that um this they the village that he's from the villagers saw this landing and thought it was like the, the, something holy going on uh but then all of a sudden uh there were people disappearing from around the village which pops up in the end because the aliens are hybrids of humans plus mm -hmm. the, the alien dna so the these people from this village who are missing are these humans and at a point, the Afghani gentleman is able to touch one of the aliens, and he sees that that the creature man, is his dad. Has a watch on its arm that belonged to his father. The aliens look like Venom, kind of. Yeah, they look, I wrote down a poor man's Venom. Yeah. Uh, you know, the CGI isn't the best, but sometimes the camera work, um, Luke Bryant serves as the DP who worked with Marshall on The Reckoning, uh, isn't the worst, but anytime we spend a, a little too much... Uh, a, little, a few too many moments on these creatures. They do look like men in costumes. Which I was struggling with because it's like we're told they're hybrids of humans and aliens. So it's like the fact that they have the build of a human. But it, yeah, it just felt very much like like, like a really good Halloween costume. Yeah. And then because the CGI isn't the best, like it, it, it wasn't convincing. This really, and plus the editing of the action sequences are very like, mm -hmm. they have that feel of like, a Steven Seagal uh, film. Like, like stop motion, kind of. So this felt like a sci-fi movie to me. Like sci-fi channel, sci channel yeah. like free on Tubi type thing. I think a lot of the special effects with the creatures came... They have this complex way of lasso... And it seems like Charlotte Kirk is the only one that they keep doing that to. She keeps, they have this complicated tongue mechanism that yeah. wraps itself around them, kind of like a... Uh, like like a rubber band that's still connected inside the mouth, and then there's another apparatus that comes out that looks like it's the visually it's like like nerves nerves or like and it gets stopped just in time each time. Mm -hmm. It's like that's that's the bad part. Um, I will say, um, I thought the basic story was interesting. Like, had this been a better uh, constructed film with better acting and better CGI I think it'd be a lot of fun even though it feels very derivative of course we have this like sort of strong woman fighting aliens makes me think of Ripley but that's okay I mean that's a great character it, it's there are scenes that 
the uh, f- at least the first three Alien movies seem like they're direct. They're, that sequences yeah. are directly lifted from that, including uh, where she's being tended to. There's a scene in Alien Three where Ripley's being tended to uh, by the medical officer, and there's a witness to something that just happened in the tunnels. And yeah, it, it sound it looks and sounds exactly. And there's like a that. ubiquitous scene where they're like uh, doing basically like an autopsy on the alien, yes. which is so laughable because all of the, especially the U.S. military people, are all just so like trying to be funny the tone is really weird with those characters um it also uh the thing both john carpenters and the original version play very heavily uh you know just exchange antarctica for afghanistan in the desert i did Uh, like that the creatures were sensitive to light i thought that was interesting yeah but then then i was also thinking because of that it feels very much like pitch black or sure um and then how you know the more interesting elements that are weaving in uh you know uh historical it's like, you know, historical fiction uh, reminds me of Overlord a little bit, too. Could I read some of the lines I wrote down that made me, like, roll my eyes? Batter up, you son of a bitch. Smile for the effing camera. Which is, like, Jaws and Predator. Uh, yeah. Foreign DNA? You mean, like, French? Because, of course, they have some sassy black lady in the middle of Afghanistan when all this stuff is going down. Lafayette. I just watched a French film starring Denis Levant where there's a military man whose name is Lafayette as well. Then there's another line where someone's telling the alien, eat your effing heart out, baby. Like, what? <laughs> it's, it's trying to recall a certain era of I think 1980s filmmaking when which is fun but this but the tone is so off because it's like a dark moody environment so it could have been something can I say what I think the better story would have been oh yes please do 1979 when the spaceship lands and the Russians take control I wanted to see that and then what caused them to leave the bunker yes for 40 years yes we need at least a good I think a really good solid maybe half hour prologue because at the, least at least because the rest of this is just like the usual we're running away from the monster so if and, and maybe there's a returning character from the russian era that comes back yeah I, I don't know there are a lot of interesting things you could have done with that yeah i don't have anything else i don't either what would you give it two out of five uh i mean i guess i would give it two for like the effort <laughs> But it's not a good movie to be. No. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye.